Well, hello again, and continuing on in the Gospel of Matthew, and this time in chapter 8, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. The infirmities mentioned in this verse is feebleness feebleness of mind. In other words, this would be our mental infirmness. In other words, mental illnesses and bear our sicknesses, our physical illnesses. Mental and physical illnesses. Well, it doesn't take much of a rocket scientist to figure out that mental illness and physical illness is still very much in the world. There have been huge plagues in the past and we're told daily that that bird flu is still on the way or something like it's going to happen and probably will either on its own or by government manipulation of viruses. Either way, something like that is bound to happen again. The writer of Matthew has misappropriated the entire 53rd chapter of Isaiah in this the 53rd chapter is an issue that is normally looked upon as talking about the nation of Israel as being God's chosen people and they look upon themselves as being the scapegoat of the world. So at the time that this passage was written that's what they were saying. They were looking upon themselves as being the spurned scapegoat of the world. This was a, something to do with national pride because they believe that someday, being God's people, that they are going to have their revenge and they are going to rule the world. That is what Isaiah was talking about. The servant of God in the Old Testament was the nation of Israel. And this was not talking about any future individual that was going to come and heal us and carry away the sins of the world. The next passage is in Matthew 12, 17. Again, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Do you see, once again, this is still talking about the nation of Israel and showing judgment to the Gentiles talks about when they are going to rule the world from Zion. It's interesting is that you go into the next passage, it says, he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. How can a Christian read this with the rest of the Gospels and believe that Jesus fulfilled this? He shall not strive, 
Jesus never wrangled, never argued with anyone, never argued with those Pharisees, nor cry. It seems to me that there's a passage where it says Jesus wept. He will not cry out. Neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Did Jesus throw the many changers out of the temples? Did he take that scourge and throw those people out? Create somewhat of a riot there? He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Preach to multitudes. Again, passages that are taken completely out of context, their meanings twisted, Matthew 13, 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and ye shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. This is talking about the fact that Jesus spoke in parables. Well, the whole New Testament was written like a parable and like the ancient myths of the ancient mystery schools to begin with. Christianity was in fact a mystery religion. There were outer stories, outer truths, and there were inner truths. Things that are hidden beneath the surface. In early Christianity, we find that the first Christians were Gnostics. They looked upon the scriptures and the story of Jesus as an allegory, as a myth. Things just like I dealt with when I was in my short s series I did about Jesus being the Son. These were allegories and they have Jesus saying that right here that he is teaching in parables he's teaching so that not everyone understands only the initiated would understand what he was talking about I have tried somewhat to reveal these things to you as I've come across them in passages. This is what happened in the early church is that the Orthodox Christians or what is now called Orthodox, those that interpreted the Gospels literally and insisted that Jesus was a real flesh and blood man who took upon himself the sins of the world and there were the Gnostics that said no the Christ is that inner light just as the Gospel of John talks about he was the light that lights every man that comes into the world this is what is being talked about in this passage <clears throat> 